welcome to the warm-up as we make our next stop at New Bremen to talk Cardinal football with first-year head coach Chris Schmidt. Thanks for letting us come out to practice. How are things going with the Cardinals in training camp in your first year as head coach? I tell you, it's been great. Uh, of course, the uh, the weather's been awesome. So uh, it has. Uh, even though two days can be a grind, uh, you know, with the weather, I guess you haven't felt it quite as much. Uh, you know, on a personal level, it, it's it's been really enjoyable. It's you know, for me. Uh, from a coaching standpoint, I've probably had as much or more enjoyment uh, coaching so far this season than I have in a long time. Uh, you know, we've got great kids here, uh, great attitudes. Uh, they work hard. Uh, they're receptive. Um, you know, I don't know, you know what that means on Friday nights in terms of wins and losses, but I know as a uh, teacher and a coach, uh, it's been enjoyable. What's your background? You previously coached at Bell Fountain? Yeah, I was, um, let's see, I seems like I've been all over now. Um, but I was at Belfont, I think, for 10 years, three of those as a head coach. Uh -huh. uh, last two years, I've been an assistant coach uh, down in the Columbus area and then uh, uh, back over this way. So New Bremen community, tight-knit community, playing in the MAC, very competitive. Mm -hmm. What have you seen out of the guys early on in camp that has impressed you? Well, I think, again, just the, um, you know, every day they come out, they're, they're willing to work, they want to be pushed. Um, there's just that, that, that mentality that, um, it, I guess it's blue collar, uh, and they understand where we're at, but um, their hunger and they're eager to uh, get things turned around and, uh, uh, you know, try to work their way up and, you know, have us compete with those other teams in the MAC. And uh, there's a lot of pride here in the school and the community, and that's obviously something that is, uh, uh, was really appealing to me to, to want to be a part of uh, uh, not only the school here, but just the community in general. A lot of work has gone into the football program, and two, you know, two years ago they almost didn't have a varsity program, and everybody's working hard, but they haven't quite gotten the results on the field, the back-to-back 0-10 -back seasons. How do you go about changing that culture, and does it start here in camp? Well, I think in, in, in many ways it starts even before that, just the, uh, the mentality, uh, whether it's in the weight room or you know, how you approach your camp days in the summer. Obviously, you're putting a lot of work in right now in two-a-days, I, I think the big thing, because the MAC is so good and there's so many great teams and programs, you know, we've talked that it's real easy to, you know, start, you know, thinking about, oh, uh, you know, what's this team doing or this team doing or, you know, what, you know, think about what they've done the last couple of years. And you start, uh, it's dangerous because you get out of the, the mode of, okay, guys, what can we do that's in our control? Uh, so that's what we've talked a lot about is controlling the things we can control and just, you know, focus on the process. You know, what are the things we need to do to make the New Bremen football program uh, the best football program it can be and let the results kind of play out on their own. But let's, let's, you know, see what we can control, you know, and that's things like our attitude and our approach, our preparation, uh, things along those lines. And then, you know, we'll go from there. How are the numbers this season for New Bremen? Uh, we are at the 41 right now, which is uh, up from the last couple of years. Uh, but we're, we're really uh, young. Uh, 31 of the 41 are uh, freshmen and sophomores. So it's uh, a youth movement, I guess, so to speak. But uh, it's good to see the numbers up, and hopefully uh, they will continue to grow. That's encouraging. They should get good experience this year. So the upperclassmen you must be relying on pretty heavily to lead the younger guys and show them what varsity football is all about. Uh, we really are. And, and even with some of our older guys, uh, with some of the experience on the varsity level, I mean, they're still getting acclimated to that and getting used to that. So even for them, that's new. But uh, I tell you what, our, our seniors and juniors so far have been great because they have done a really good job of uh, bringing those young kids along. Uh, they've done a great job leading, whether it's in the weight room or on the practice field or in the locker room. And uh, I really think that's going to pay dividends in the long run. Had your first scrimmage yesterday. What did you see out of the guys? Are you impressed and are you content with where you're at or still a lot of work to do? Uh, still a lot of work to do. I, I don't think there's going to be uh, any coach at this time of year yeah. that, that's going to say that they're right. content where they're at. Um, you know, we saw some good things, some positives, and, and we saw things that we got to continue to work on and get better at. And, and of course, in a scrimmage, that's, that's what you want to see. You want to see where you're at. You want to see where your personnel's at and, and um, be able to tweak some things and, and see what you need to work on more and, and improve on those things. And, uh, you know, so we watched a lot of the film yesterday and uh, have made some, you know, strides, I think, here in the last day or two. And, uh, you know, on Saturday we'll have another one. So hopefully we're seeing improvement from what we saw on Tuesday. Offensively, what can we expect from the Cardinals this season? 
Well, we want to be able to try to, to get the ball in our, our playmakers' hands and uh, uh, let them make plays for us. Uh, we're a team that um, you know primarily is going to be more run heavy, mm -hmm. um, but we want to be able to throw the ball, obviously, and, and, and try to have a good mixture there, and whether that's play action pass or just maybe some quick things on the outside. Uh, where we're at right now with some of our youth and uh, I guess numbers, we feel more like for us to be successful, we want to be able to try to uh, control the line of scrimmage, run the football, uh, shorten the game as opposed to maybe being in a spread where you're trying to get a bunch of snaps and maybe uh, lengthen the game. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, defensively too. We want to be able to put the best uh, guys out there we can defensively. And uh, uh, we feel like uh, having a good running game offensively can help us on the defensive side of the ball. Opening up the season at home against Bradford, what's an area that needs improvement between now and then? And if there's multiple, maybe one you're most focused on. Well, I think it's just, uh, I think line of scrimmage play is always a big thing this time of year, um, whether that's on the offensive line or defensive line, uh, just playing lower. And, and I, I guess that comes to even with the, you know, the linebackers and running backs. You, you want to see everybody playing a little bit lower, a little bit better leverage. Um, you know, getting off the ball faster. I, I think that's one of the big things when you have young kids. There's obviously there's going to be some differences there, uh, strength-wise and even uh, maybe mentally-wise there with maturity. Uh, but I think it's also the speed of the game too that they have to get used to. So, so hopefully, you know, that's something that when we start to get to that week one and then into week two, that you know, some of that speed of the game is not as fast as what it is currently right now. Right, and when you have young guys, the good thing about that is they're coachable. They don't have their own patterns yet. So have you seen progress here in camp that is moving quickly? Yeah, we really have. And, uh, you know, like, um, like all players, I mean, there's things where you're, you have certain habits and you want to build, I guess, better habits. But I've seen a lot of, a lot of stride. And, and, you know, some days as a coach, you're, you're thinking, man, I wish that went a lot better. And then the next day when you come out and, and you do it, it, it does look a little bit better. So you know that the kids are catching on. And, and sometimes, you know, I'm guilty of wanting to go faster and, and have things, you know, quicker and, and more up-tempo. And you just kind of have to pull yourself back and remember, okay, hey, you know, let's make sure that we're teaching the kids, you know, everything and, and breaking it down for them and uh, teaching it step by step and slowly but surely, you know, the, the speed will come with it. All right, that progress is very important for everybody. Close out with a little talk about the MAC. What do you know about the MAC? Many consider it one of the best conferences in the state of Ohio, and you know the competition's going to be very tough week in and week out. Yeah, and and for me that was something that appealed, and uh, you know being able to come and compete in the MAC, and and you know that uh, week in and week out you're going against the best, and. Uh, and you know, I think for us as a program, we talk about, hey, you know, for us to be the best program we can be, you know, we have an opportunity to go against the best each and every week. So uh, you know that, you know, the schedule is going to be difficult. But, uh, you know, for me, I'm excited. I want to, you know, experience, you know, Friday nights in the MAC, you know, whether it's playing at home in front of our crowd or, you know, what it's like to play at Versailles in the pit or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, uh, those are things that I'm looking forward to doing. So. Uh, it, it's exciting, and the other thing is, you know, being on the outside of the MAC. A lot of times, you know, whenever you would go to a playoff game and you'd see a MAC team there, you know, you see all the other, you know, varsity jackets it from is all the community. other schools. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's awesome because uh, there's a lot of great competition amongst the communities and schools, but then they're all very supportive of each other too. So it's, uh, I, I'm eager and looking forward to it. Well, best of luck to you this season, Coach Schmidt. Thank you for letting us come out. We need to take a break here on the warm up. When we return, Mark Koontz will sit down with some of the Cardinal players. Welcome back to the warm-up as we continue in New Bremen. I'm Mark Koontz, joined by a pair of Cardinal players as we talk with Greg Parker, wide receiver, defensive back, and Dion Haney, a tight end linebacker. Guys, both of you are, are seniors. As seniors, what would it mean to, to finally get the, this New Bremen program turned around in the right direction, Greg? Yeah, it'd be really nice to get this thing turned around. You know, we've had a rough past couple of years, and it'd just be nice to get a couple wins here and there and just get these young kids on track so they can have successful careers and um, their futures. Dion, obviously a few years ago, this new Bremen program was on life support. 40 some kids out right now, not quite where you'd like it to be, but certainly better than where it was. Is there a sense that the, the program is on its way back, that there, there is more uh, enthusiasm in the student body for, for the younger kids to come up and play and come out for football? Yes, there is. Uh, the freshman class has 26 coming in, so 
I think they're finally starting to turn around. They've had a successful career in the junior high, so they're starting to have their spirits up high. So when they get to the bigger level, like with us, they'll finally start to turn around. Yeah. Dion, what's Coach Schmidt like? Coach Schmidt, he's uh, he's intense, but he's quiet. He always wants to get you fired up. He always wants you to go 100% always, like every coach. But then he has that side where he's like, okay, he's going to stop, break it down to you. He's going to give you a step-by-step -step to make sure that you can be the best you can. Greg, do you see that, that quiet intensity come through in practice then? Uh, yeah, he likes to, he'll sit and watch, and then when he needs to correct you, he will. And just when he needs to get kids fired up, when practice starts to get slow and kind of dull down, he really gets that energy back out of everyone and gets things back going. Greg, a couple of weeks before the opener against Bradford, what do you guys need to work on the most between now and then? I'd say just our line of scrimmage, just our pad level, being able to fire off that ball and be able to control the line of scrimmage. During our uh, scrimmage um, yesterday, we had uh, a lot of plays where we just get caught in the line of scrimmage because we'd come up too high and everything would just kind of get jammed in there. I think we just need to all come off a little bit lower, just be able to get some more movement on the ball. That way we can open up some more holes for our running backs to make plays. All right, Greg Parker and Dion Haney from New Bremen. We're going to take a timeout here on the warm-up when we come back. More from the Cardinals here on WOSA. Welcome back to New Bremen as we continue on the warm-up with the Cardinals as we're joined now by a pair of offensive linemen. Mitchell Kramer also plays on the defensive line and Brennan Topple, linebacker as well, both seniors. Mitchell, obviously, you've got the walking boot on. The question is, will you be ready for week one in Bradford? Uh, maybe not week one. Hope shooting for week two, though. Still got a little work to do, a little rehab to do on it, then it should be good to go. Overall, yourself excluded, how's the health of the team going? Um, team's been very healthy. We've uh, made it through two days with little to no injuries, so that's always good. Brennan, coming up in September will be the third year anniversary of the last time New Bremen has won a game. How, how much would it mean to the senior class to, to get New Bremen off that schneid and pick up a victory? Oh, it'd mean everything. Uh, just, just a win like that, that'd, that'd just boost everything. I mean, all the freshmen would see how that is, and that'd be great for the, or the uh, program. Brennan, do, do you look at what Fort Recovery did last year and use that as a little bit of inspiration? Indians kind of came out of nowhere, had a very good season, made the playoffs. Do you guys kind of go to ourselves, think to yourselves, they can do it, why can't we do it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, just, a t just another team in the MAC like that, just coming almost out of nowhere and just making the playoffs. That's, I mean, that's just sweet. It, we'd, it'd be perfect if we could just, you know, kind of win a couple games, get ourselves on track, and maybe eventually we can do that too. Mitchell, two straight winless seasons. Does that wear on you guys? Has the attitude come back from, from having a pair of 0-10 seasons? Um, it certainly wears on you, but I've learned after those seasons that you just got to look past them, and they're in the past. You can't, ch can't do anything to change them now. You just got to look next day, move forward, live from, uh, learn from them. Mitchell, what are the goals for this year's team? Um, I'd say after going 0-10, like I said, last two years, I'd really love to win a couple games, get this program turned around. That'd be great for my senior year. Brennan, outside of week one in Bradford, what game do you have circled on your calendar? Uh, week two, I'm pretty excited for as well. Uh, I mean, another, another uh, non-conference uh, game, but it'll, I think it'll be uh, exciting to get a win there. Yeah, New Bremen opens up at home against Bradford for traveling to Holgate, and then they take the trip to Maria Stein and take on the four-time defending state champions, Marin Local. That's going to do it for us tonight on the warm-up. I want to thank all of our guests from New Bremen. For Matt Finkel, I'm Mark Koontz. We'll see you next time here on WOSN.